Dale Bonner. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am a couple drinks deep, and that is Cameron Stewart. Both of us work for Inside the Bears, and happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you had a good time last night watching the Baylor Bears dominate the Oklahoma State Cowboys. So look, thank you, by the way, for making this your first listen every single day. Look, the score was a six-point game, but was it really a six-point game? No, I Baylor's up like you know, 15, 19, whatever it was, with a couple minutes to go. And without Langston Love... We'll say without, without Keontae George, they moved the ball well. The defense was spectacular. And I think Dale Bonner might be the best player on the team. Look, I mean, Scott Drew said in November they had the best ball mover in America on the team. And he wasn't saying it about Keontae George or LJ Cryer or Adam Flag or Langston Love. He's saying it about the Nat, Dale Bonner. And he has been a sleeping giant. Dale Bonner coming up off the mat. Who had it on their bingo card, Drake? Not I. He was the difference last night. He was the difference. Again. Career high in scoring for Dale Bonner. Jalen Bridges and Flo Thamba both fell out. By the way, Flo Thamba had a good basketball game again. But he, gave you, but, he, but he gave you your moment. He gave you your moment. I was thinking about he, you when that happened. He did. I was so mad, bro. Oh. And I was saying the same thing. I was like, Flo's had an awesome game. We're going to come on this podcast once, and we're not going to have anything to say about him. And Dang it. we don't because it doesn't – It that one stupid play does not overshadow the great game he had, but you got your moment on that. <laughs> yeah, just end of the game. If you didn't watch it, two minutes to go. Seven point game. Baylor can close it. I mean, it's, it's like a minute, maybe a minute and a half to go. Seven point game. Baylor can close it out with a wide open flow thamba dunk and John Shambi. Flow thamba. And then Fran Fraschilla. Oh, John threw it off the bottom of the rim. Florence thamba. Wide open. Nobody within this feet is, of them. This is what the maddest bear dunk is going to look like. Like, for sure. This is the Robbie Triano. I'm trying yeah. to dunk. I'm going to just chunk it off the ba- off the bottom Drake of the rim. The clock winding down in his intramural <laughs> game is just giving it a go. Just what can we make just happen right here? Threw it at the bottom of the rim. By the way, he scored his last field goal via an emphatic dunk. That Same play. Helped- yeah. Same play. But the first one, he said, I'm going to lay it in, guys. I'm not going to be too fancy and just yak as hard as he could off the bottom of the rim. Uh, but he had a good game. He did have a good game. He, he rebounded so well. Yeah. Um. I And it's what's so weird. Oklahoma State, look, Oklahoma State's a good team. I think the, their resume, Hot. Yeah. They're, but they're borderline tournament team at this point. They are going to need another win. Uh, at Lubbock, they're going to need another win in the they tournament really, really uh, tournament to be able to make thing. March. But they, that team on the road is a team that Baylor could lose to. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baylor I lost would... on the road to a good Big 12 team. They were, I mean, you know, ba- the Bears were barely favored. And they dominated this game without Keontae George, which seems to be working. And without Langston Love, who's... I exploded. He had a yeah, towel okay. on his eye for the rest of the game. I, like, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't think I, it doesn't sound like he's going to be back in the next game. If he can't see out of his left eye. Maybe, maybe not. I was, I was worried about Baylor going into last night's game. The Baylor? Um, Our- yeah. yeah. Yes, I was because Oklahoma state hot um, playing at home and they really needed to win. It's not a absolute make or break for their tournament chances, but it really, really, really would have helped. Uh, basically would have written them in a pen at least yeah. if, if they won last night. And uh, first off, I mean, the place was like half full yeah. in a game that they needed to win. Um, and Baylor played them into the kind of offense they made them play here at the Farrell Center um, when Baylor got their second conference win of the season. Um, they they forced them to shoot from the outside. More impressively, which comes from the worst part of Baylor's performance last night, 
22 offensive rebounds for Oklahoma yeah. State. That number yeah. did, you know, peter out in the second half. I think they had uh, 12 in the first 15 minutes, um, but in 10 in the first 10 minutes. But the fact that they weren't getting great looks off those offensive rebounds was super impressive. Hmm. I got to eat my words a little bit. I was I was a little uh, concerned, I guess, when Scott said last week they need to change up their defense. Not because I don't believe in him, but because it's just so late in the season. And we've seen two pretty suffocating defensive performances in a row. Yeah. Again, Oklahoma State is not a good shooting team. That's why Baylor forced them out there, both of those games they played against them. Um but that was impressive. Again, a, a, a team that's coming in red hot for the most part, the last month and a month, month and a half, playing real good basketball, um, playing at home in a game they needed to win, and you held them under 70. Basically should have held them under 60, but for that weird burst in the last minute and a half that shouldn't have happened. Uh, very impressive defensive performance tonight. Very impressive. And I think that is one of the things you can point to. Uh, no shade against Keontae, but – having Dale Bonner in there playing Keontae George minutes help, helps that out, helps that cause out for sure. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma State head coach Mike Boynton said a, a few weeks back when they played at Waco that this Baylor defense forced us to shoot the ball outside, that it wasn't great defense, but they forced us to do what we're not good at, which is, to me, good defense. And Oklahoma State goes 28% last night from behind the arc, 9 for 32. Baylor played to its strengths. Which I think it was to, seven for thirty-three the first time, by the way. Seven for yeah, thirty-three in the first matchup. So she looked at like a mere identical. performance. Like they're yeah. like, all right, shoot the long ball. And Oklahoma State misses the long ball a lot. Baylor's counting on that. They rebound the ball decently enough. Which look, when a team shoots thirty-three three pointers, you expect more offensive rebounds because of longer, longer misses. So I, I kind of get why that stat looked the way it did. And Baylor still dominates this game. I don't I, I'm usually the Debbie Downer. Oh, but this six point win is a lot like to me, my clock kind of stops at the two and a half minute mark where I was going to open the show with Oklahoma State shoots 35 percent overall. You know, the free throw percentage sucks. Baylor does a good job of not fouling, playing solid defense. And I, I think a lot of that still applies here without I, I, I pose this to Brandon McKinnon without Keontae George. You can't say this team is better, but they do play more selfless basketball. You're seeing more movement offensively. You're seeing better defense. I, I Again, and Dale Bonner getting to play adds a lot better defense. I don't want to say Keontae being out is a plus at all, but I don't think it can be a coincidence at this point. The team does look better with the new look lineup. I think it looks more like a Scott Drew team that we're used to. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I, I want. I don't want to stop you completely, but yeah. Look at last year. Wasn't a Scott Drew team to me. A lot of me ball with your with your. I mean, you've got two guys. Eventually, Jeremy Sohan steps up into that role. But Kendall Brown was kind of your Keontae George last season. Of all right, you got more one and done guys. Not a Scott Drew philosophy. This year, without Keontae George, there's no one and done. So I would agree. You're seeing more more Scott Drew stuff, whereas. Last year and even a lot of this year, it wasn't a lot of your typical Scott Drew. Yeah, I just think I just think this without with Bonner specifically with Bonner in the place of Keontae, um, we see a lot more Scott Drew basketball. Most of that does come on the defensive end, and yeah, I mean it, it's tough to say they're better without Keontae, and I think he's doing a lot of the right things. Um, but he's a young guy, and it's a, it's a different offense with him out there than we've yeah. seen most years under Scott Drew. And I was saying it, I said it during the game, um, when when Baylor's guards are attacking, like attacking the rim, I know they're all great shooters, and that's fantastic, but when they are attacking the rim and exploiting that that middle of the middle of the defense, if you will, top of the key, free throw line, they're attacking that area of the floor, they are getting exponentially better looks, whether it is from three yeah. or the floaters were going tonight. Uh, these guards can get to the last rim night. sometimes. Last night, sorry. That that is a big, big change, and I think that's something we see a little bit more when Keontae isn't on the floor. Um, and that is something that when Baylor's offense has been on this year, that is where it's looked the best. And I said it up a week or two ago. We've seen some great defense or offensive performances from this team. 
mostly against the bottom tier of Big 12 teams. When you're looking at uh, at least the first weekend of the NCAA tournament, that's the that's the quality of team you're facing. Maybe even not quite that good. Because, mm. I mean, think about that. You're These are like last teams in, so probably 11 seeds. And, and you know, you're facing a seven probably um, at uh, in the round of 32, right, as a two seed. So yeah, yeah. Th- th- that's about the quality of team you're playing in the second round. So that's something for Baylor fans to feel good about. Yes. And I, I, the reason I don't completely agree with that is because I think Oklahoma State is a little bit better. Like a road game. I I think that's probably fair to say they're a little bit better. A road game against seven. Yeah. Oklahoma State is probably better than a round two game against a seven seed Northwestern. Uh, Despite, I think Northwestern or Rutger, I mean, there's some good Big Ten teams in the middle of the pack there. I can agree with you on that. I think on the road against Oklahoma State's even tougher. And Baylor showed down two players who get a lot of minutes that they're, they're still really good. Um, one thing that has consistently been not great, Caleb Lohner. Um, look, I, I rode Flo Thamba for a month. I, every show I mentioned Flo Thamba for a month straight and now he's good. So Switching Caleb, here. you are next. It is your time, Caleb Lohner to step up and be that guy. And you know, what's better than Caleb Lohner? Built Bar, today's sponsor of Locked on Baylor. Built Bar is the bar. You go to Sam's Club, you go to Walmart. Look, I could <laughs> I could I could take my shirt off right now. I could take my shirt off right now. You people listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of that, you wouldn't see it, but you people on YouTube, you would. And you would say, Wow, Drake, you don't look chiseled at all. You don't look you, you mentioned cut for Cabo a couple weeks ago. You don't you don't look cut. I don't. But I've lost five pounds. I've gotten five pounds more ready for Cabo because of Built Bar. If you want to lose five pounds right now, immediately, and there's no, there's not a lot of fat, there's not a lot of calories. It's Built Bar, 130 calories. It's less than my granola bar I eat every morning. 130 calories. 13 grams of protein, only four grams of sugar in a built bar. They have churro flavor, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. Get it at Sam's Club. Get it at Walmart. Buy the Sam's Club membership card thing that's supposed to be for rich people. You get that and you get 13 built bar, a 13 pack of built bar at Sam's Club. All of that can also be bought at built.com. You go do that at built.com. You want to immediately lose weight? It's how I've been doing it. It's like, all right. You know, it's lunchtime. I don't have a lot of time. I got American history class and I go straight into PR programming. I got to eat something. I'm going to eat a built bar. It's going to help you be healthy. Built.com, Sam's Club, Walmart, built bar. I promise you, you'll like it. If you don't, send them to me, built bar. Um, Cam, looking for, so I, maybe I jumped the gun. Maybe I jumped the gun. I mentioned. I'm saying you're a Cabo cut. Yeah. You did jump the gun a little bit on that. I'm cut uh, for the West Coast right now. I'm ready. West, comma, Texas coast. The degrees, Cabo 73 degrees yeah. next week when I'll be there. And the the not Cabo, Cancun. Cancun's 88 degrees. Yeah, I was going to say, is, is Cabo hot enough? Is that, no, is that it's enough? not. It's not hot enough. It's California. Cabo is an extension yeah. of California, effectively, which, mm-hmm. you know, California. Nobody wants to go there. It's not a party, that's for sure. So I will girls and whatever. Yeah. Well, here's another big problem. When we planned this Cabo trip with all the, the ATOs sing champions, by the way, in the intramural basketball championship tonight, yeah. when we planned this, the Kappa's got a hold of it. And then the Kappa SIGs got a hold of it. And the KOT's got a hold of it. And then all the fraternities and sororities are all going to the same resort. And it's our resort. So I told my buddy, my roommate, like, um, Hey bro, you can find a girl this week. I mean, you already know her. <laughs> There's not like, like, oh yeah. But then you st- can't. But then you can't use that excuse when you come back. Of oh, I met her, met her on a cruise. Right. Met her in Cabo. You wouldn't right. know her because we would know her. It's like, oh, I met this super hot girl. We had the one week fling she in Cabo. Me. She's gone. We're good. And then you're walking to your nine a.m. on Fountain Mall and just what? Oh no! I thought like, you had car troubles. <laughs> How's the <laughs> chlamydia? Can I say that? You take your medication. It doesn't matter, man. Because I have. 
And here's um, the worst part. I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun last week. Yeah, did. you did. <clears throat> By saying Baylor was not hot at the right time. I was like, all right, this Bears team, you know, end of February is not where it needs to be. And now the last the last two games, your lottery pick gets hurt and you're the king of the world. Uh this this Baylor team is scary again. My my bookie texted me of all people, Lance, my bookie, texted me. I was like, bro, what is this team? A week ago, they sucked. And now they're playing team basketball. I was not scared of Baylor a week ago. I was ready for them to get bounced in the round of 34. And now take this, Evan Mia. They look really good. They do. They do. I had the I got dropped the question by a colleague last week. Are they going to make it out of the first weekend after that Kansas State loss? I said, yeah, probably tough not. for me to bet on it, man. Really tough. Um, now there is another loss coming because we boycott the Big Twelve tournament. We do boycott so, that. Yes. Um, the, I'm sure the sign of solidarity will be there once again. But yeah, I mean, this team is is playing. We said this before, right? We've said this before this season that this is the way it's supposed to look. The, the way they are supposed to win. Um, they're they're going to outshoot teams, but I also like the ball hawking defense and uh, the rebound. Like you said, the rebounding numbers actually aren't that bad from last night. They just gave up a ton of offensive rebounds, which they can't do much more of. Um, yeah. So all, those boxes are being checked. But we said that before the season and I will give the benefit of the doubt because these, some of these defenses in the big 12 that they've run into, that made us stop saying that um, are literally the best defenses in the country. So uh, I feel good about this team. I probably shouldn't say that, but I do. I feel good. Um, That said, the the thing I was most impressed with last night, kind of the overarching thing, not Mm -hmm. just their performance was that they didn't lose their heads. Not that like they are a veteran team, but we've, but they didn't, get out of their groove. They didn't get out of their offense. They didn't start throwing the ball around and they had the backup point guard playing. Okay. And and they were getting their butts kicked on those boards in the early parts of the game. And it felt like they couldn't get on that run. You know, they were up 10 early and then it vanished and they couldn't get the separation because they were getting their butts kicked on the boards and they just stuck with it. And that league goes to whatever, 17, 19 towards the end of the game before they almost blow it again. Uh, but I was I was impressed with that, especially with a backup point guard who hasn't had a lot of time the last couple of weeks. Dale Bonner came in pretty cold against UT on Saturday, and he was just so in control of the game. Um, they were unfazed. Flo Thamba wasn't getting stupid fouls necessarily. He was fouled out of the game. Um, but I, I liked that. I liked that resolve they showed. And I like watching Jalen Bridges in the post, man. Yeah. That dude's got some post moves. I think he only got like six <laughs> points in the paint last night. But that man can shake in the post. There was a point you can where feed him go to work. Baylor's up like nineteen to ten, I think. And Jonathan Chamachachua and Flo Thamba are on the court together. So Scott's going okay. <laughs> it didn't work against Texas, but maybe if we switch Josh O and Flo Thamba, we're on to something. <laughs> they were not. It didn't work whatsoever. So we learned again. The two-post lineup, not a thing. But when Jalen Bridges is out there and adds some size, some rebounding, you're in a good spot. Baylor proved last night, oh, here we go, here we go. I saw people tweet, Baylor won this game based on depth. And that's not true. That's just not true. I don't think it is. Baylor won this game on stamina. Baylor won this game on durability because it's the same guys who are contributing these moments, these, these minutes. Dale Bonner. Like it, it's Dale Bonner, but okay. That's depth, man. That's depth. The, no, it's not depth because who's ahead of him on the bench. Who's been ahead of him on the bench the past two months. Josh Ocean Wuna has been ahead of him at times. Yeah. And Caleb Loner and Langston love loner. Isn't that, not- isn't that a better argument for the depth, by the way? So here's to me it's to me it's not depth. I'll let you go. I'll let you to me it's oh okay. To me it's not depth because the two guys, Josh O and mm-hmm. two of the guys, Josh O and Caleb Loner ahead of Dale Bonner, just weren't as good as Dale Bonner. They just weren't. They were not. Well, yeah. yeah. And they haven't been. So it's not that Dale Bonner, despite being down the depth chart, wasn't as good as these guys. He just maybe didn't fit the scheme, or maybe there's something we don't know about behind the scenes. There are 
six guys, six players who legitimately contributed to last night's win. This is not depth. This is durability. Langston Love went out and Keontae George went out. That didn't mean that Baylor went down the depth chart on the bench. Didn't mean they went to Josh O. It just meant that more minutes. LJ Cryer played 40 minutes. This is not depth. This is durability. Baylor's not the deepest team in the Big 12. They're just doing more with a guy like Dale Bonner, who despite being ninth in the depth chart, doesn't deserve to be there. I suppose that's a fair point. I mean, I would also say, you know, Keontae George out, Langston Love out. When they're in, in the tournament, oh, yeah. that's an eight-man rotation and a very, very But it's solid not. But it's not. But, it's but not. yes, it is. When, you just said there's no, six no, guys that no, contributed. No, there's because, two that were out. Because when they're in, Dale Bonner doesn't play. Don't ask he's me why. Ob- well, he's obviously going to play me now. He's is obviously he, going to is play. Is he obviously going to play? Yes. he's doing this yes. stuff. He was doing this He's stuff He's winning already. games for them. Then why has he been on the bench? That's a great question. I'm not arguing that question. You know who's I'm not, not going to ask that it? Question. No Any one's of the Baylor it. media. Neither no. of us are going to the press conferences, and nobody's going to ask Scott why Dale's not been in. But I think he's going to play now. He's got he's to play now. He's got to. Please, he has to dear play God, now. God, he's got to. So I say that's a very solid eight-man rotation. Bend eight, me. Eight guys that can come in and contribute at any point. And that includes Flo Thamba, by the way. Um, Who only played 20 I minutes. Yeah. I think you're really in a good place if you've got eight solid guys that can be interchangeable as starters, which I think these guys are. I think you're in a good spot. And I, I agree with you, man. I, I would love Caleb Lohner to give you something. Oh, geez, please, Caleb. He is elite. If you are listening, Caleb, coming down please. Because oh. even if he was that, even if he was just your energy oh. guy, that could get you some rebounds. Like I've said this before, but like I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say a cuss word, JTT was in 2021. That's huge for you. Energy guy, defend, and just pull down some boards. He doesn't even really need to give you points. But on a night like tonight, it really would have helped if he could last, last night, night. Last night, if we would have come out and given you some rebounds and kept them off the offensive glass. Um, and Josh O, I don't expect to be much in the rotation uh, going forward. He played more than I think everyone thought he would this year. Yeah, uh, and we'll have a definitely we'll have a role next year. Yes, but, okay. I, I don't think there's any surprises anymore with with Dale Bonner's coming out party. I don't I don't yeah. think there's any more surprises on this team. I don't know that Zach Loveday is going to come out and and just start dunking <laughs> on people. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Bonner played 33 minutes of basketball. Two games ago, if you told me that, I'd be like, oh, well, damn. <laughs> you well, played that the year. whole conference season before <laughs> yeah. Saturday. Literally. Yeah. Literally. And it's just, they were like, all right, Dale, it's got to be you. So, again. And he was excellent, man. This is only- what we saw the glimpses of in November, and we were like, huh, is he going to be able to do this against conference teams? Only and it took the whole time, but yes, he can. Six guys played more than 10 minutes. Again, you could make the case this is good depth, but they showed in this game durability over depth, in my opinion. Because I would say it's good depth. A lot of those guys have been playing like Flo Thamba, LJ Cryer, Adam Flagler, Jalen Bridges, and Jonathan Chamo Chachwa. Those five guys now are consistently getting 20 plus minutes. Yeah. Then you add you add in Dale Bonner. Like Caleb, please, man, please anything. Having Dale Bonner out there is spectacular. It's good. Like, I I have so much respect for what Dale Bonner's doing because he got benched. He literally yeah. got taken out of the lineup to the you point he where. Was gonna leave. Oh, three weeks ago, you and I are looking at each other. It's like the Black History Month game. And everyone's wearing the Black History Month t shirt except for Dale Bonner. We're like, well, shoot. The one guy on the team not wearing the team issued t shirt probably isn't very happy with the team and now he has the gall the gumption that when they're like all right dale everybody else is hurt guess you got to go in to be the catalyst for this team being (laughs) good the best player in the country yeah yeah they flashed a graphic on the screen during the espn broadcast last night dale bonner 11th in the big 12 in steals like should i tell them he hasn't played the last 10 games at all Fran was like, Dale Bonner's getting all this playing time tonight. 
Because Langston Bonner, Love is Bonner, out. Bonner, 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 Bonner. He was like the friggin' uh, seagulls from Finding Nemo. I found out. Some, I found out someone on the coaching staff is not a very big fan of Fran Fraschilla. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. And I, I can't, can't say who, it. but I found out somebody in the staff just does not like Fran at all. <laughs> Join the club, guys. Join the club. This guy one went one... to Den Gaia. One last thought on the depth thing. Okay. I think it's really good depth. And I said it last week on the show. We'll hear from Scott Drew. We'll hear from Scott Drew tomorrow, by the way. Because because when we get into the we see it year in, year out. I can't give you the teams off the top of my head, but we see it every year. Teams that go to the final four and they're tight six, seven man rotations. And I'm talking real contributors. Like they might have a Caleb Loner out there, but not but he's not part of like the, the contributing rotation. Villanova, right? Kansas, UNC. And, and, and they'll have the star power, but it's a six, maybe seven man rotation. UNC is a great example. Carolina last year had like two guys that were actual threats. That's, and that's had a, a strong tight word. Rotation. Threat is a strong word. You know, <laughs> like, like I was like, man, two guys they actually got to cover here when, when they need a basket. And Baylor knocked one of them out of the game and still didn't win. <laughs> um, and, and so I, I say that because, out, by the way. because having eight, because having eight of those guys you can trust, seven and a half, if you want to include Flo Thamba with no one ahead of him and needing a dunk, um, that that is such an advantage over most of the teams in the field. Again, you could run into a bad matchup like you did with Carolina. That, that happens, right? That's why it's the best tournament, single elimination. One guy gets into foul trouble and you're in deep manure. But having the eight-man rotation, majorly advantageous. It is better than the World Cup. It's not better than the bean pot. It's the best tournament in sports. Bean pot. I don't, know, I don't even know what that is. I know you don't. <sighs> It's Rockland High School something. Boston University, Boston College, Harvard, Northeastern. Hockey. First two Mondays in February at the Garden. It's hockey. 70, 70 almost 75 years. Oh, I'm drink toll. This is a Miller Lite. That's Cameron Stewart. No free ads. Both of us inside the Bears. Dude, it's the best beer. It just is. It is, yeah. It is. Michelob, Michelob tastes like water. So does yes, Kowalski. I was like, are you going to put this second or something? That was, I'm glad where you went with that. There's not a second. It's just, it's just I went to a wedding uh, within the last two years, I guess, um, that the only light beer was Michelob. I just had to have a lot. It's a lot of sporting events. A lot of sporting yeah. events are like that. Yeah, like, oh, we have Michelob. I have noticed that. Arenas love Michelob. Ow. I think it's because you can sell more of them. It's watered down. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. sell more. It takes 32 Great. of them to feel something. Yeah. This has anyway. been, always will be. Come back tomorrow. We'll be talking about Baylor basketball. We'll You're talk, we'll talk uh, rankings two through seven. Up here. Locked on. What is Guinness? Baylor. That's a meal. <laughs>